Here we have this Tektronix device, a part number 0670681-01 calibration fixture tunnel diode pulser. Um, I've had this since 1986. Uh, for many years I didn't know really what it was good for. Um, I've only recently discovered that it actually does work and what, what it was used for. So in this video we're going to uh, kind of review what this is, what it's for, and check out its operation. Um, mainly it's used to check the rise time on fast oscilloscopes, but we'll get into that in, in a moment. First we're going to, uh, to show this thing. This is the top side. It's got a B and C input, a B and C output. There is a some markings on it uh, in a in a pot. Otherwise, it's pretty nondescript. Um, small die cast aluminum housing with a cover on it. I'm going to take the cover off of it and show a little bit of what's inside of it, and uh, we'll go from there. So I removed the access panel from this uh, tunnel diode pulser and there, you can tell there is not a whole lot in here. Let's see if we can't get this to focus. Um, there's a pot here, there's a cap, there's a basically only a few discretes. And I'm going to show a schematic pulled off of the uh, Tektronix Wikipedia page or the Tech Wiki for this device which shows a schematic of what's in here. Checking out the functionality of this uh, Tektronix tunnel diode pulser um, so I've read the uh, instructions on this and what it's supposed to be is it's just to have a it's designed for 50 ohm inputs on your scope and all the scopes I have don't have 50 ohm inputs so I have uh, this 50 ohm terminator connected before I hook it up to the scope input so the if you look at the input here it says it needs uh, 60 to 100 volts square wave input. So where I'm going to get that is off my Tektronix 531 oscilloscope. So I have um, the calibrator input um, set to uh, 100 volts peak to peak here. I'm just kind of looking at the waveform as a monitor with this T, T here. What I have noticed is that the, this pulser tends to load down the calibrator output a little bit. Um, Alright, so we're going to check it out. I don't really have a worthy scope to, to test this thing. This thing has a rise time advertised on the picoseconds, which is a really, really fast rise. You need a wide band scope to do that. I don't really have one that's quite up to that, but we're going to see what we can get with what I have. So we have this uh, 1990s Tektronix TDS-210, which is a 60 megahertz bandwidth. So we're going to connect this up. Alright, a little trouble with the BNC connector, not wanting to push in, everything was moving around. Um, all right, so we've got the waveform that comes out of this pulser um, device, and it's not very high amplitude in the spec. You know, the, the data sheet would tell you that. I think it's like 250 millivolts peak to peak, something like that. So what we're going to do? Let's turn up the sweep speed. We can keep turning it up and turning it up and turning it up to see what the apparent rise time that this scope will show is. So this, uh, here we have the fastest sweep speed on this scope which is 5 nanoseconds per division. 
I had previously had this connected, so I've got these cursors set uh, to approximately to show what the rise time is. And, and here we have uh, a spacing uh, on the time here. Do we have this? I thought we did. At any rate, the it's about five nanoseconds per division on this thing. So if we were to move this over. You know, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of five nanoseconds of parent rise time. But again, this scope's only 60 megahertz, and it's not really up to the task of, of showing the capabilities of this early 70s pulsar device that was intended for very wide bandwidth scopes. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on from this one, And then I have another 90s era scope here. Let's get this one connected. This is a, also a 1990s Tektronix portable scope. Um, this is a uh, THS 720A. And it has an advertised bandwidth of uh, 100 megahertz. Um, however, it will not display any any better than 50 nanoseconds per division. I've set this up to have it measure the rise time, and it's showing about a little over three nanoseconds for this. All right, we're going to move on to another scope that I have that was borrowed from work, and we'll, we'll see what that one can do. So I've put the pulser. In this other scope I borrowed, which is a TPS 2024 scope with a 200 megahertz bandwidth, um, the auto measurement on this one shows the rise time of about 2.2 nanoseconds. Um, this scope at 200 megahertz is still not quite um, high enough bandwidth to really check check out the, this pulser spec. Uh, I'd love to uh, bring this into uh, one of the la one of the labs at work where I know there's a one gig scope and I think to another lab as a four gig scope, but I would need to figure out some way to power it because you need a 60 to 100 volts peak to peak square wave to do that, and I don't think there's uh, anything suitable in those labs unless maybe I perhaps tried to make something to do it. Um, at any rate, um, just some information on this. Early 70s uh, Tektronix uh, calibration fixture, this tunnel diode pulser. An online reference source is showing the data sheet for this Tektronix uh, tunnel diode pulser. Um, so there's a, a few specs about this device showing that, uh, you know, what, what kind of uh, pulse that you could get out of it. Very informative uh, data sheet with some specs on the rise time of 125 picoseconds maximum. And they include a schematic and parts list even with some mechanical exploded drawings. So I have one of these devices in my collection and it appears to work. Um, Alright, thanks for watching, all for now.